Neanderthals were once portrayed as having dwelt in a state of astonishing savageness and uttering sounds more like the cries of wild beasts than human speech. Indeed, for much of the last century, Neanderthals were portrayed as gorilla-like, knuckle-dragging brutes, whose extinction some 30,000 years ago was the natural outcome of this failed evolution. When the Neanderthal cranium was discovered in Neander Valley, one early anthropologist wrote that darkness characterized the being to which the fossil belonged, and the thoughts and desires which once dwelt within it never soared beyond those of the brute. In fact, stereotypes of prehistoric people as simple-minded cave thugs were common. Meanwhile, scientists continue to investigate Neanderthal behavior and genetics. Some Neanderthal populations may have been so small that there were few options for partners. For example, an ancient Neanderthal woman's DNA from the Denisova cave in Siberia revealed that she not only belonged to a small breeding population of probably less than 100 people, but that her parents were also very close. But there's more. Mounting evidence suggests that Neanderthals frequently inbred or conceived with close relatives. Several studies have now reported this, citing genetic patterns and bone abnormalities thought to be caused by intra-family flings. As a matter of fact, when it came to relationships, some Neanderthals preferred to keep things within the family, but were they doomed by inbreeding? Indeed, the Neanderthal woman had parents who were half-siblings, double first cousins, or an uncle-niece couple. What she or her parents thought of this situation is unknowable. This situation might have been normal or abnormal, but intriguingly, though not coming from such close parents, another fossil from a teenage Neanderthal Denisova hybrid from the same region was also spawned by a similarly small breeding population. Nevertheless, sometimes Neanderthal populations might have travelled all the way from Western Eurasia to Siberia, or vice versa. On the basis of the variation in the fossil specimen's genome, a study deduced that her Neanderthal mother was more closely related to a Neanderthal specimen found thousands of miles away in Vindija Cave, Croatia, than to another found less than one mile away in another cave. First, let's look at the facts surrounding these claims of consanguinity, or mating, between relatives. Then consider, let us the consequences. How did inbreeding affect Neanderthal health and survival? If inbreeding brought down royal dynasties, it could also have led to the demise of the Neanderthals. An individual who inherits such negative characteristics is referred to as being inbred. Inbreeding causes homozygosity, which increases the likelihood of offspring inheriting recessive traits. In extreme cases, this typically negatively affects a population's biological fitness, known as inbreeding depression, the ability to survive and reproduce. In a study, scientists published a genome extracted from a toe bone discovered in Siberia's Altai Mountains, revealing the first strong case of Neanderthal inbreeding. This aforementioned Neanderthal woman lived approximately 120,000 years ago. The Altai Neanderthal woman's genome shows extensive homozygosity, indicating a close relationship between her parents. To determine their relatedness, Geneticists scanned the genome for regions with non-overlapping windows, devoid of heterozygous sites, and merged adjacent regions. Simulations of inbreeding scenarios resulted in regions of this size and length, with an inbreeding coefficient of one-eighth. Furthermore, the Altai Neanderthal woman has long runs of homozygosity on the X chromosome. This eliminates parental relationships where one or both X chromosomes were inherited from closely related common ancestors, such as two males in the pedigree. Therefore, this Neanderthal individual's parents were likely half-siblings, with a common mother, double first cousins, uncle and niece, aunt and nephew, grandfather and granddaughter, or grandmother and grandson. Even if the Altai Neanderthal woman is descended from a long line of inbreds, she represents only one Siberian population living over 4,000 miles from what is considered Europe's Neanderthal heartland. Yet the fact that the Altai Neanderthal population mated with kin does not imply that this behavior was typical of the species. Not all Neanderthals were cavemen, half of them were cave women. When two populations are close but very different, because they speak different languages, have different traditions, or live in neighboring territories, 
they will exchange women. That means women have greater mobility, which means my sister will join your tribe and your sister will join mine. And genetic evidence reveals that the issue of patrilocality or female mobility was also important to Neanderthals. And this is critical in terms of cultural anthropology, because genetic exchange is not always a love affair. Genetic data also revealed Neanderthals' low genetic diversity with a demographic depression peak in the Altai, where a highly inbred individual known as Denny was discovered. The study also found genetic continuity among Neanderthals across Europe from 120,000 years ago to the population's extinction around 40,000 years ago. This low variability is also evident in Neanderthal morphology, which has remained consistent for the last 100,000 years across their range, from the Atlantic to the Altai Mountains. Even during their Golden Age, a brief warm period around 125,000 years ago, the total population of Neanderthals was unlikely to exceed 70,000 individuals. This small population size could be attributed to Neanderthals' geographical isolation as a result of Pleistocene climate fluctuations in Europe. At this point, the Neanderthals, distinguished by their distinct morphological features, spread eastward through the Caucasus Mountains, carrying the same lithic assemblages and technology as far as the Altai Mountains, where they encountered the Denisovans. Indeed, Neanderthal populations were never large, consisting of small, interconnected groups of about 20 people, though they did form larger groups to hunt large herbivores, such as giant elephants. According to evidence from mass kill sites, Neanderthals hunted elephants in groups of 10 to 30 hunters, but this could be extended to 50 or more individuals when planning, butchering and distributing resources is considered. But what about the Western European Neanderthals? Several lines of evidence point to inbreeding among Neanderthals from El Cidron, Spain. Over 2,500 bone fragments have been recovered from this site, representing at least 13 individuals of both sexes and ages. Archaeologists investigating El Cidron believe the skeletons are from a close-knit Neanderthal group that died together around 50,000 years ago. Congenitally deformed characteristics in the El Cidron remains included cleft or asymmetric vertebrae, a misshapen kneecap, and a baby tooth that remained into adulthood. The identified conditions are uncommon in living humans and may be harmless, but they occur more frequently in cases of inbreeding. In other words, the skeletal features suggest that the parents were very closely related. In France, Neanderthal DNA from a fossilized Neanderthal jawbone unearthed in Mandarin Cave by Ludovic Slimak and known as Thorine, was recently analysed in a groundbreaking study. This DNA represents a distinct and archaic lineage that diverged early from other Neanderthal populations. This separation is notable because Thorin's genetic profile reveals limited gene flow with contemporaneous Neanderthal groups, suggesting long periods of isolation. Thorin's DNA diverges significantly from the Vindiger cave Neanderthals in Croatia, and even from the Denisovan branch of archaic humans. Genetic analysis indicates that Thorin's lineage split from the common Neanderthal population tens of thousands of years before the more well-known Neanderthal genomes from Vindija Cave and Mesmyskaya Cave. The separate lineage suggests that Thorin's ancestors became geographically or reproductively isolated early on possibly due to environmental barriers or population fragmentation during glacial periods. Although Thorin represents a distinct lineage, his genetic relationship with the Vindija cave Neanderthals is complex. While they shared a common ancestor, Thorin's lineage diverged much earlier. Vindija Neanderthals, closer in time to the extinction of the species, show more signs of interbreeding with early modern humans, something largely absent in Thorin's genome. This divergence supports the idea that Thorin's group was cut off from the genetic exchanges that connected other Neanderthal populations. The isolated nature of Thorin's lineage is further supported by genetic markers of inbreeding. Studies of ancient DNA often reveal signs of inbreeding among small, isolated populations, as reduced genetic diversity is a hallmark of such groups. Thorin's genome also shows evidence of homozygosity, 
regions where both copies of the DNA are identical, which strongly points to inbreeding within a small population. As discussed, this pattern is not unique to Thorin. Other Neanderthal genomes also exhibit evidence of inbreeding, highlighting the challenges these populations faced in maintaining genetic diversity. During Thorin's time around 50,000 years ago, fluctuating Ice Age climates created fragmented landscapes. Rivers, mountain ranges and advancing ice sheets could have restricted movement, leading to isolated groups like Thorin's lineage in southern France. This inbreeding likely contributed to the decline of Thorin's population and other Neanderthal groups. As mentioned, this increases the likelihood of harmful genetic mutations being expressed, potentially leading to reduced fitness, health issues, and decreased reproductive success. Combined with pressures from changing climates and competition with Homo sapiens, inbreeding may have been a significant factor in the eventual extinction of Neanderthals. Thorin's DNA provides a fascinating window into the genetic diversity and isolation of Neanderthals. His distinct lineage and signs of inbreeding reveal the challenges faced by these archaic humans as they navigated Ice Age Europe. This genetic isolation, combined with competition from modern humans, paints a picture of a population on the brink, struggling to adapt to a rapidly changing world. Lastly, according to another recent study titled Blood Groups of Neanderthals and Denisova Decrypted, scientists looked into the blood types of three Neanderthal genomes and one Denisovan genome from the Altai region. Only one Neanderthal's blood had previously been typed, and it was found to be type O using the ABO system. All chimps are type A and all gorillas are type B, so all Neanderthals were previously assumed to be type O, according to a statement by the researchers. However, the new study discovered that the aforementioned 120,000-year-old Neanderthal fossil from Denisova Cave had type A blood, as did the 48,000-year-old Neanderthal fossil from Chagaskaya Cave in the Caucasus region, while the 64,000-year-old Neanderthal fossil from Croatia's Vindija Cave had type B blood. The simplest, most straightforward and most likely explanation is that the last common ancestor of Neanderthals and modern humans possessed the entire ABO system around 600,000 years ago. There is still debate about whether that ancestor lived in Africa, Europe or Asia, but they must have been very widespread when the split occurred. The blood type findings also shed light on the Neanderthals' rapid disappearance. The three Neanderthal fossils separated by 50,000 years and at 5,000 kilometers over 3,000 miles, all had the same rare rhesus type. The most surprising finding was that all three Neanderthals carried a rhesus type known as rhesus plus incomplete. This supports the findings of genetic studies that show low genetic diversity, which can put a species at risk of extinction. Such a common blood group pattern across time and space is consistent with a Neanderthal population with low genetic diversity, resulting in poor reproductive success and extinction. According to scientists, red blood cell groups are extremely effective anthropological markers. The phenotype and genotype of red blood cell geographical distribution reflect previous human migrations and natural selection and comparisons with primates allow researchers to accurately evoke their evolutionary and migratory trajectories. The rhesus plus incomplete blood type, discovered in three Neanderthal fossils but not in Denisova III, remained unknown in modern humans until it was identified as a new variant in an Aboriginal Australian. Thus, this is not a novel variant in historical terms, as it was present in Neanderthals at least 100,000 years ago. The low diversity of Neanderthal genes in modern human populations implies that, while multiple Neanderthal individuals contributed genetic material to modern humans, there was most likely only one major episode of admixture. Denisovan haplotype diversity, on the other hand, reflects a more complex history with multiple admixture episodes. In the past, researchers considered that Neanderthal man was only capable of primitive reasoning and animalistic savagery. Neanderthals are now considered an archaic, Homo sapiens hunter-gatherer fossil population that lived in Western Eurasia before being completely replaced by modern Homo sapiens throughout their range. 
In fact, in regards to the distinction between modern humans and Neanderthals, many paleoanthropologists now recognize them as subspecies, Homo sapiens sapiens, and Homo sapiens neanderthalensis, in accordance with their overlapping morphology and genetics. Thank you for watching, and please share your thoughts in the comments.